This video will introduce you to the theory of evolution and the mechanism of natural selection. The first step is to define evolution. Evolution is the change in allele frequencies over time. These changes in allele frequencies can build up and cause changes in the overall population over time. We can see many examples of how organisms have changed over time, from humans to dogs to wild creatures. One example of evolution in modern day is the evolution of antibiotic resistance in bacteria. In the 1940s, penicillin, an antibiotic used to kill bacteria, was introduced. In the beginning, and these antibiotics, like penicillin, were highly effective at killing especially Staphylococcus, but other bacteria as well. Over time, we see the buildup of the resistance gene. This allows more and more bacteria to survive and thrive even in the presence of antibiotics. This is a huge issue in modern medicine. We now have several strands of antibiotic-resistant bacteria which infect people and cause us to get sick, and our antibiotics are no longer effective at killing these bacteria and helping us get better. Another interesting example involving bacteria is the bacteria that digest and break down nylon. Nylon is a synthetic substance created by humans, and it was introduced in the 70s. Somewhere along the line, there was a mutation in some bacteria that allowed them to start digesting nylon as a food source. Previous to this, these bacteria could not touch nylon, and it would go to the dumps and sit there for long periods, not being broken down. We can also see that humans have caused change in organisms. Artificial selection is the process where humans pick selected traits or beneficial traits in an organism, and we affect their breeding and reproduction to make sure that those beneficial traits get passed on from generation to generation. A great example of this is the evolution of corn. We see that the wild ancestors were very small with few kernels. Those seeds were able to disperse rapidly and easily to so grow new plants. During domestication, we started selecting for bigger kernels and ones that would stick more strongly to the cob. Over time, we've gotten many different varieties of corn. Now we see that modern corn has hundreds of kernels on each cob that are big, juicy, and full of starch. This is a complete and drastic change from that original wild ancestor. Humans have done something similar when we look at dogs. Dogs began as a wolf-like ancestor, and we have bred them for selected traits that we want. And now we have breeds from a Chihuahua to a Great Dane, each very unique and different with a set of characteristics that we have chosen for. We need to see that evolution and genetics go hand in hand. These two relate because when we talk about evolution, we are talking about changes in allele frequencies. Remember, alleles are the variations of genes. This means that evolution is working on inherited traits, things that we pass on from parent to offspring. The result of evolution is a population changing over time. This can be over very long periods as traits and differences build up, and it can lead to speciation or the formation of a brand new species. So let's back up for a minute and look at a population. Populations are groups of organisms of the same species that are found in the same location. Generally, these organisms are able to interbreed. Populations are what are going to evolve. In this example, we see a population of tigers, and there are very few white tigers. Over time, especially in captivity, we see that the proportion or frequency of the white tigers increases over time. This is a type of evolution. In this unit, we are going to talk a lot about evolution by natural selection. I want to make sure you guys understand that natural selection and evolution are not interchangeable terms. Evolution is the change in allele frequencies over time. Natural selection is a mechanism of evolution proposed by Charles Darwin 
and it causes these allele frequencies to change over time. In natural selection, we see that nature gives value to certain traits. This causes an increase in fitness for certain phenotypes. The organisms that are more fit or better adapted to their environment will have more babies or a greater reproductive success. This means that those beneficial traits will be passed on more often to this next generation. Over enough generations, this can cause a change in our population over time. Reproductive success is also known as fitness. So when we're talking about evolution and fitness, we're not talking about going to the gym and getting big and buff. When we talk about fitness and evolution, we're talking about reproductive success. This is a measure of the amount of reproduction of an individual with a particular phenotype, and we compare that with the reproduction of other individuals in the same population. So basically, if you are more fit, you have more babies. The product of natural selection is adaptation. Adaptations are when organisms become better matched to their environment. These are specific features that an organism has that makes them better able to survive and reproduce in that specific environment. This picture here, we see that the porcupine has the adaptation of quills. These quills are sharp and they are very good at deterring predators. This allows that organism to survive and reproduce more often. In the next parts of this chapter, we will be looking at the evolution of an idea. We're going to take a look back in history and see how Charles Darwin got his inspiration for the idea of natural selection. We're then going to look at the mechanisms of evolution in more depth. We're going to see how evolution can actually occur. The last part of this chapter, we will look at evidence of evolution. I will show you several lines of evidence that support this overall theory of evolution.